Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. We're all here. Connie's better. Got over the flu. Yay! Welcome back. That knocked the wind the heck out of you. It yeah. did. It did. It was down for the count. April first. So you know. I'm no fool. I know. <laughs> <laughs> April Fool's Day. We're all here, though. It's good. Yeah. Good to see you. I haven't seen you guys since uh, the Easter weekend, yeah. or even before then. Yeah, I think it's, it's been, been a while. while. It feels like it's been a while. It's, well, it's, we were together last week, but I think that was the, uh, the St. Patrick's Day party where the three of us were all together. Yeah, right. you're right. That was fun. Right. The the time Deegan's is just house. blipping by, isn't it? At, at the Deegan's house, where young Connor Deegan's running for town clerk. Oh, and stuff. Yes, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's you know, exciting. It's, yeah, it's kind of neat to have someone young, you know, getting involved. Absolutely. You say young, young's a relative term. He's, he's 23, well, he, 24. Quite competent. Uh, but, uh, oh, but yeah. yeah but just a few years out, which we always say we want young people. We need young people's voices in our, the running of our communities. So definitely applaud him. He loves it. And yeah. he's uh, a natural. So good luck to him. And all the other people running for offices in town. It's a we busy were time. Have we were going to have Margie Wigan on today, but she actually got a conflict at um, Elwood School where she had to cover she a class. She works. Right. Yeah. So uh, we'll be setting up a date very soon in the future with Margie on. And, and in case you don't know, Margie Wiggins is running for? She's running for selectman, but the main part of our conversation with her is more youth about commission. is that she's chair of the youth commission she helped be one of the founding members of it and what the youth commission has done from everything from the be free concerts to martin luther king yeah. um, awareness day to the healthy fairs mm -hmm. and kind of what that is encompassed in the community um, she's also um, an eagle scout mentor and a scout leader and been very involved in the community and then she's an, she's a published author and um and she, if, all there's, if there's any kids listening she swoops. She swoops at she Elmwood. Swoops. She swoops She's at Elmwood. Equal. Oh. And they, okay, now we can't talk about it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because she doesn't like it said out loud. <laughs> Nobody knows. Well, you Nobody know, as, you, as you share her background, and we're going to have her on, you know, soon, the idea I was thinking about this this morning is so many wonderful volunteers in Hopkinton doing a lot of things. But when you run for office here in town, that is the epitome of community volunteerism. It really is. I mean, it is, it is probably the more rigorous. But if you, I mean, I say this just as a broad appeal to anyone who's looking to um, really step up and volunteer. You know, that's the opportunity. Yeah, yeah so I mean, commend I, I, Margie and others who are doing I know so. I did a shout out that we actually have a lot of Real Housewife members that are actually running this time. Um, Jennifer um, Flanagan is running for Board of Health. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's, how yeah, do you list pronounce, them off slowly, yeah. What, what's, how do you pronounce Maureen Baummiller? Baum Miller, Baum well, she's running Boom for re-election of Commissioner the Trust right Funds. Future. <laughs> Kelly Carp is running for Parks and Recs, you know. Um, so four women we're talking about already, uh, no, which is awesome. No, at least, awesome. yeah. Um, um, Nancy Cavanaugh is running for school committee. All members of right. Real Housewives. So it's kind of neat to see that, you know, exactly. we have these women. Not rising. Connie Wright. No, no. Claire um, Wright. Is but Claire Wright for her. <laughs> well, but yeah, but Claire's not on Real Housewives. Oh, she right. isn't. But oh. Still, so but I was just actually being a woman in town. Yeah. You know, yeah. women in town. So between the women in town and young Connor Deegan, who is also not a traditional profile, you know, being, you know, it's under kinda, 30 years old. Good. It's good. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is actually probably the most contested races out there. Um, I think almost. Which is great. I think almost every. Um, office is contested. Mm -hmm. I know that the Democrats had their caucus a week or two ago and um, the Republicans are having Coming theirs up. in a week. And that, um, you know, we'll see, I'm assuming they'll be even more contested and more candidates yeah. coming up. Um, but um, yeah, I think it's going to be a dynamic um, town election this right. year. And I think it's going to be a dynamic town meeting as people are talking about things happening downtown and changes downtown. Uh, um, it's a lot. Talking Absolutely. about changes, so the latest I've heard on the plaza right there at Lumber and Main Street uh -huh. is opening May. Wow. Yes. That, that's that's yeah, I, was, I actually met with a so senior cons consultant yesterday that is overseeing, the, is, is part of the Golden tennis Spoon facility. Golden Spoon will be... As of May? Great. Opening... Called the Spoon now. Uh, the Spoon. The spoon. I, well, they may as well, because that's what everyone called it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what everyone so called I, it. So I'm just curious how... You know, speak, yeah. And it'll be a little I'm bit sorry. different, the Spoon now, well, too. Well, and, and what yeah. is it? The grill... 101. 101. 110. 
101. 101? I thought it was 110. Yeah. No, it's 110. 110. 110. 110. 110. 110. 110. 110. 110. 110. 110. Uh, we have, I, you know, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to that. That, that, that's that actually has very good reviews. And then we Excellent. had it at Pink Night. Oh, yeah. the food is delicious. He actually posted recently, they opened up a restaurant in Berlin, mm -hmm. uh, Mass, and uh, so this art's coming up. But you know, speaking of going into new things, I crossed the threshold and went into CVS for the first <gasps> time last evening. Oh, I've I been know. in there. It's fine. Oh, no, it is. It totally is. But, you know, just walking up to it, I said, you know what? It's convenient. I'm going in there. And of course, I got what I need and so forth. But I also I want to go into Marty's. And into Marty's. I want to go into Marty's. Marty's I haven't been awesome. there. You can get groceries. I mean, you know, you can I get. get I, I've been getting our <laughs> coffee at Marty's. Really? Right. Yeah. Coffee, f uh, chicken, <coughs> fish. I mean, you know, uh, high end gourmet things to add to. Oh, cool. Because I went to Marty's when it was no. in Newton because I used to work out in the Wellesley area a lot. And so I would go there. And so the first thing I beelined to was there where they have coffee. And it was. You mean it's packaged a, coffee? It's, or it, yeah, it's it's whole beans. That's good. They have co a really good Costa Rican coffee, and whole beans is two pounds for nine ninety nine. Oh. Wow, and it's their everyday bad. price. Well, for it. I still get my coffee at, at Waterfresh. I like their, their yeah. Well, they do the um, fair trade beans, and oh. so I'm a huge you yeah. know me, That's huge great. advocate of green and fair trade oh. and all well, stuff. I love Waterfresh stuff like Farm. That. Everything. See, there's um, so many wonderful choices. That's where our coffees are from today. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, well, since we my, have since, wonderful yeah, treasures. since my April Fool's trick, which <laughs> right. wasn't a trick, was you know. Um, your daughter missing uh, yeah. the bus, not she missing the bus. She didn't miss the bus. But our bu Melissa's bus comes at 6.45 in the morning, Ooh. which is early. And at 6.48, she starts screaming, I must have missed the bus. I must have missed the bus. I'm like, can we give it five minutes and see if it's running late? And she had a big, big prank they were pulling today at the high school. She wanted so to be she early. wanted to be on time, everything else. So by like 7.58, we're in the car leaving. And the bus is coming down into our neighborhood, running late. I'm like, well, we can turn around and you can go to the bus stop. No, no, I'm going to be late. <laughs> so hopefully her trick the went off. But I drunk. threw my computer in the car before coming here. And I just actually went and worked at Waterfresh Farm for yeah. an hour or so before coming here and grabbed the coffees. So Thank speaking you. of April Fool's jokes, yeah. what has been some of your favorite Ooh. tricks over the years? Yeah, I'm not a prankster. I can't Have you say. been pranked? I'm sure I have been. But I have to think about it. I don't know. My I don't sister was really mean one year. She and I were visiting her parents in Florida, and, and this must have been, I must have been 30-something, so I had one or two kids in tow. And she had a medical conference. She's a pediatrician. And so she was borrowing my father's really, really, really nice Mercedes that he would never let anybody drive. We could drive mom's car. Mm -hmm. Whatever car mom had, we were always allowed to drive that, but couldn't. And she and I set this up. And she called him on her way. And this is when cell phones really didn't, weren't <laughs> the vogue. So I think she actually got to the conference and called him from the conference and said, Dad, I had an accident. I'm OK. But I think the car's totaled. <laughs> oh, jeez. I couldn't keep a straight face. I felt so badly for my father. I was like, <laughs> OK, Dad, she's pranking you. <laughs> you know? I just thought of a prank the kids did for me years ago. We had had um, raccoons in the chimney oh and had had, you know, the animal control people come out and all of that. So um, this, all, over that, no big deal. The kids put a stuffed raccoon into the fireplace, kind of coming out okay. around the great thing. <laughs> and um, this was down at the lower level of the house and so something, you know, I wouldn't have seen right away. So I went downstairs for something. It was probably in the evening of that night. And I was screaming like a banshee, thinking that this thing was coming out of the freaking fireplace. I was hysterical, and that's what they did to me. I probably blanked it out. You know, you know <laughs> I blanked out something when you said that. So I'm pretty tough. There's not a lot of things that scare me. I have no problems with rodents and vermin oh. and snakes. Oh. But I do have one phobia, spiders. Spider. You know my phobia. <laughs> I know <is> that. <laughs> and and See, I'll I, step on a spider, but and oh not my god, I back. can't kill him. <laughs> Damn, my middle son Emerson, he got one of these ginormous, fuzzy spiders, but it had a, a cord attached that you, puff and it makes it leap. Oh shoot! If he didn't have that thing right outside my bedroom door, and that morning. 
as I'm getting up, he waited for me in wait, and he had this thing crawling at me. Girl. My first time, <laughs> I was on the seat. Like, I was clinging <laughs> to the seat. Too bad they didn't have cell phones. Oh that my picture. god. Well, Darlene, I know you're a prankster. So what have you so done you to folks? So you probably <laughs> didn't get pranked. You, you were pranked. the prankster. I've done. I've been, probably played a part in a prank or two here and there. Here, here okay. and there. Okay, tell us what like you that. don't mind I mean, being um, public about. Um, well, I, like you know, I went to Regis and um, it had a con. It, well, it still does, but very small now. It had a convent on campus. Um, it, don't think it's mean. It was funny. Okay. So there was one nun that she had some special mental issues, I guess. And um, we would break into her room and rearrange her furniture. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> um, then there's that we broke into the nun's laundry room and we took all their wet underpants and put it in the ice cream freezer <gasps> in the uh, cafeteria. Oh. Um, that actually is funny. That's, That's funny. So big nun on pants. Um, oh my God. Yeah, my um, brother did that to me once. He put on my bras in the freezer as an April Fool's trip. It's like, really? Really? <laughs> you know, this isn't funny. <laughs> crazy. Um, now it doesn't seem funny, but at the time, um, while my parents were sleeping, we put flowers like in between them and set up a little gravestone and everything. Oh, God. <laughs> like, oh. And they woke up in like like little tombs. <laughs> wow. Um, we've done the saran wrap on the toilets, you know, uh, under the on the under the toilet uh, lid, that so that like what's and, and that is not been, like, good, you know, <laughs> camp things. Um, okay. <laughs> so you've and had some even, good ones. And even this morning, um, I text our wonderful state representative and a couple people that. Um, Trump is starting to sound like really good to me and stuff like that. You got us with that this morning a little for a few seconds. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, yeah. it's fun. and I know. All in good fun. All in good fun. Yeah. All in good fun. Oh, absolutely. No, I'm not, I'm not the clever one when it comes to pranks. Right. I get pranked, and I'm so easily fooled. When <laughs> you too. pull one over oh. on me, don't think you've accomplished that. <laughs> stealing candy from a baby. baby. I am easily fooled. So, you know, get over yourself. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> what isn't an April Fool's joke today, and a very important day here, is Snappy Dogs reopens today. Yes! Woo! <laughs> Yay! You know, I, I'm the I'm the trailer is open. Yay! And the new location, and right? At Western, Western Nurseries. Nurseries. Yeah. Yep. They, I, am, I am the proud donor. They took my old refrigerator that was in my basement, so mm -hmm. they're going to be using my fridge. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to taste well, you know, ah, the head see over what, there. what Lisa and Teresa have conjured up for us today. <laughs> so what they the April Fool's an joke is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, so, cool. you know, on a, a not, not April Fool's joke, but certainly a horrific surprise oh. was, you know, uh, the uh, body found at the recycling plant in Hopkinton. I mean, big news yesterday. No. I, I'm no. always confused at, at the whole... Um, like clearly somebody wanted to be found um you know what i i, I, I never like the, i never I, but the again. makings of a mystery novel you it know, really small is town and then this you know and who knows i mean it's the beginning well, I mean, so they have it, it all figured out by the day i think the funny part of it is you know most likely it has very little to no connection with hoppington they've what's, already said it whatsoever doesn't. and the fact that 90 percent of Harvey's property sits in Westboro, including their headquarters, and but just the recycling piece of it right. sits on the Hopkinton town line. That all of a sudden, this became Hopkinton uh, news, and it's like, guys, they collect trash from all over and, right. and stuff. You know, it happened, and it's horrible and unfortunate and stuff. But I mean, I'm getting texts from people who live in like out of state oh, I know, and things I like know. that saying, "So well, what's happening in Huffington now? They find another body?" <laughs> and I'm like, uh, "Yeah." So I shared it I'm because like, it is so unusual. Uh, in, yeah. uh, we were at Fridays for dinner last night, we and are I um, still one of the safest towns, towns uh, to in, live in. This in America, is six. Oh, we course. may be bumped because of this. Who knows? No, but this <laughs> really no. in our town. Yeah. I, I get a text from someone saying like. We were at dinner at Fridays and um, saying, "Look, all right, what did you do to your husband?" Ah, and I'm like, right. "I'm like, oh, he's here with me this week, so." And I'm claiming mine's out of town, you know. Yeah, yours is right actually out of town—a real cool thing. Right, right. So my husband had an opportunity to go to his bucket list place in the my world. My bucket list and your bucket yeah, list too, big. Havana, Cuba. So did he go with others? Was he it did. A tour he went. Or? Well, you know, his um, 
cousin is the founder, part of the uh, co-founder of a um, nonprofit arts uh, organization Ooh. and um, in Rhode Island. And I think they were able to go Is as part Lenny of that. Or, or well, it was Lenny's brother. Okay. Yeah, that went. Very and cool. um, You know, kind of cultural art, you know, exchange information, uh, low key, just five days. Um, but he didn't know whether it was going to be. He didn't know whether there was going to be internet service or not. He yeah. Kind of prepare for the work. So we were delighted to see some messaging that he's there. Some beautiful pictures. Well. Oh. Well, so. Yeah. What's really cool the about cars Cuba? Are cool. The well, that's yeah. what I was gonna say. Frozen in time. They when the whole thing happened, it was end of 1950s, and Cuba was shut down. Exactly. And so, literally, they didn't have access to new vehicles for a bazillion years, and they retooled parts. And now it's like going back in a time warp. It's and I've heard totally, this. Totally. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the cars are beautiful. Well, I, I are. heard but this. You know I, I oh, really yeah. want to go. But the, it, it, for, we hope that some of that preservation will, will still happen. Right. He's, he's, he's taken some pictures with some old Chevys and stuff that look in mint condition. It's like the antique car show of the world. But we forget that the rest of the world was able to trade with Cuba. Russia, um, China, etc. Still, it still looks I pretty had sparse. Friends from Germany, yeah. ten years ago, went there scuba diving, and oh, they could travel there. And, and I'm Canadians like, and Europeans I'm have like, been going. You, I, you know. right? So other cars are there, and, right? You know, so there's other things. And I think yeah. you know now with the bidding war going on with you know Hyatt and the Marriotts and West, right. all trying to get in and build quickly. I just hope they don't. Turn I think into it is going to. I think I, I think that's kind of the goal is to make it you know. A little Miami, three hours well, from, you know. Bear in mind, right. because before the whole Miami, shutdown, Havana was the hip and happening well, place. Was. They had the casinos. That's they where the, the wealthy. of the Caribbean. I mean, it, it was, was like the spot. The right. wealthy Americans would go there and party. It was sort of the hedonistic, you know, go and. And it was but it was the haves and the have not. Well, I mean, oh, yeah. just think you of know. the Lucy show, too. And I know. Even, even some of their episodes, they would uh, had you know, mock right. not in Cuba because that's where Desi Arnaz was from right. and everything else. But it was very romanticized because it was at that period of when they were taping right. the number one vacation resort in the world, in the Caribbean. For, right, for sure. And that, it, you know, it was, you, if you lived in New York, you lived in D.C. area, you lived there, you it's there. a three-hour flight. So yep. I look forward to it coming back. And that was whatever the flight just started and, cruise, and when the cruise right. lines were, you know, hopping, it was a cruise from Miami yeah. that you did. But you know, would you think, would you realize that there's no industry there? So it is pure, pristine, Her clean air, clean water. Yeah, farming. I mean, farming, yeah. yes. But I mean, they don't use Cute. any high end cigars. cigars. Cigar. Oh, and Brad said he's had several Cuban cigars and he's That's loving so it. funny. Oh, you know, and the food, well, you know, I'll see more because the pictures that he sent look a little That's wild. interesting. Yeah. They don't have a huge seafood, which I thought they would. They do a lot of pork and a yeah, lot of potatoes. And, I wonder. And it's yeah. an interesting cuisine. Well, the thing he sent a picture of was this octopus well, thing. Well, then yeah. that's that's a changeover, and that's yeah. probably well, in anticipation. You yeah. know how, like, Andrew went to St. John's for that winter yeah. break thing? Yeah. They actually don't serve any seafood either. And a lot of it is because it, there's a chemical that was in part of the Caribbean that actually has poisoned a lot of the seafood there. Oh. Man-made so, chemical or some natural thing, do you uh, think? Probably man-made. It was probably. some man-made thing that got yeah. dumped. It's a, <laughs> they don't serve anything. And they, um... Darn. They, uh, See, but nobody I mean, been dumping it, crap by Cuba. So, oh, honestly, God. I remember in Jamaica, cut back when we were in Jamaica, yeah. and we were in Nassau a few years ago. They cut back on a lot of the seafood, and... Um, but I'm like, oh my God, there was chickens everywhere. I mean, chickens uh -oh. in the street, chickens everywhere. Well, and everywhere you got, the chicken was like the main thing on the course. I mean, Andrew came home from St. John's and said, with feathers, I'm not huh? eating barbecue chicken <laughs> for two weeks. <laughs> so the segue, though, do you guys have any big trips planned or doing anything? Have you? We've like, got our girls weekend coming we're up. You doing could, a, yeah. But I mean, I know you're going to Savannah. I'm stuff. going to Savannah in April, yeah. um, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, my cousin turned 60, so... It's my sisters and sister-in-laws and cousins, and we always do major birthdays. So there's six of us. So it's not every year, but we get pretty darn close where we, we run away for a long weekend. Yeah. I mean, I, during uh, April vacation, I'm going to go up to Maine for a couple of days, hey. probably. But how fun! Mm -hmm. I hope to, to get to Charleston. There's a semi-work related thing. Cool. An old friend, got, you know, needs some help with some things, and I may try to do that in um, actually end of 
April. It's already April. April one. I know. Yeah. Yeah. We're a third of the way, uh, a fourth of the way through the year. First quarter just ended. I know. Uh, it's like, wow. oh my God. You know, I, you know I'm, we're gonna. Yeah, that's that's a milestone for us with and the taxes real house are coming. Oh, uh, 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 tax <laughs> Thirty words. I know. And there's Bart. so much going on in the community. I yeah. mean, even tonight, I mean, by the time this airs tonight, two things that are that I'm checking out. Oh, open the um, the Edible Book Festival with the Girl Scouts is late this afternoon, early evening at St. John's. What does that mean, Edible Book Festival? The Edible Book Festival is actually a national thing, and it's not. And it, you you pick a book and you make some sort of food creation to copy that, it. That, oh. that, but it's actually a national April Fool's thing. I had no and idea. And that the yeah. Girl Scout troop here is doing it as a community. The yeah, kind of engagement yeah. thing. No, it's no fundraiser at all. No. It's 100 percent free, no admission. It really? is just a community engagement and to encourage reading. And they they building, yeah. uh, you know, the interest in books. And that this is part of their bronze award. Oh, okay. how this cool! This girls' school troop. And thought, that they adopted this national thing and they want to make it an annual thing. Uh, tonight's open mic with Barbara Kessler at HCA. Yep. Um, so people, it's like karaoke. Do people just no? Come it's in not and like karaoke. Where does it go? There's How's, some there's yeah. some performers that are scheduled, and then other people can show up with guitars and play. Mm -hmm. But, but the th scheduled performers will start around seven seven thirty. Is and this then the first Friday of every month? Is it's the that first the one Friday of every month, and it's um, this is the second one. Uh, the last one it was standing room only. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm planning to go tonight. If you yeah. guys want to. Oh, you, you, you always have something I'm going else to No Static and um, Riles and no, Cambridge to I'm hear going a to the Steely airport. Dan cover van. Yeah, and you oh, and I, you have to but get a bread, but that sounds fun. I'm going dancing, the airport. Maybe, so. Yeah, I'm going or dancing and playing. Oh, yes. I thought we were dancing tomorrow night when um, Hot Acoustics is at Speaker's Club. I'd like to club. go to that. I made you that already are a speaker, darling. It's my party weekend. Yeah, it is, it sounds like. If people are in the need of a haircut for a cause, um, um, across the street from HCAM at Uptown Salon, Anne Michelle Dragsbeck is doing her annual cut-a-thon. I think mm. it's 10 or $20 haircuts that goes toward um, her Boston Marathon run for Project yep. Just Because. So support so Anne nice. and mm -hmm. go get a haircut. I'm not sure if they're doing a lot. Sometimes they've done mini manicures too, yeah. but it's walk in with your, you know, your hair wet and get a haircut. By the way, that was Mike Teresian's um, <laughs> thing going off there. Um, I'm hopefully there's not a fire. Um, <laughs> Tuesday, I, are you guys going to the Be a Hero event for the Y? That's going to be a bittersweet. Oh, and I want yeah. to get to it. It's actually a community engagement thing of how the Y is trying to get more involved in the community and building community leaders and involved. Wow. An incredible and resource with the Y. It really is a fantastic. And that well, we went to a thing just last week for the Y. Oh, yeah. you were sick. And it was just so compelling what the Y is doing for families. I mean, it, you know, they say they're more than just swim and gym. I mean, they really are they uplifting kids and families and with the, the types of programs and how inclusive it is. And, and how many scholarships they do much, and, yeah. the, and stuff. How much but money it, they raise. It is awesome. It's education and wellness. Yeah. And yes. that, you know, this is really to help draw community leaders and the community impact we can have with the Y. And that's actually, you have to RSVP in advance, but it's um, next Tuesday at Bittersweet Farm. And um, if you can get a hold of um, the Y and let them know, that'd be great. But I believe it's on Hop News. You can check it out, the, the flyer for it. Yeah. Um, and next on? Saturday is an event that's actually still close to my heart, and my, and my family will continue to support. Is um, Troop Four's um, oh. annual fundraiser, the Pancake Breakfast. At oh, that's what I was yeah. thinking about. That was and a fundraiser. Um, yeah, the Boy Scouts. It has a very large silent auction usually with it, mm -hmm. and um, in Scout tradition, veterans of whether you're a National Guard, new vet, old vet are always free. They mm -hmm. always take care of the vets. And um, it's this Fun troops breakfast. only does two fundraisers a year. They don't door knock, they don't sell candy, they don't do any of that stuff. They recycle Christmas trees mm -hmm. and they do this breakfast. So, and Fair this enough. money, my son has been recipients of it and other kids, this money is given to as scholarships toward some of the big high adventure camping trips they do. Um, one year for Andrew, it was toward National Jamboree when they went down to Virginia, him and another boy, that really it's given right back to the kids. So, mm -hmm. you know, go Great. support. It's an awesome thing. And I'm actually excited about our guest that we'll have on next week, too, which is oh, Paul Kalerke, yeah. okay. who is, wrote the book um, that is getting released next, um, next Monday. 
Ah, yeah. What's and the book? Uh, the book is Boston Marathon Mile a Mile. And he's actually a Boston, mar I mean, Boston, Boston, Boston Marathon, Marathon mile, mile by Mile. Mile by Mile. And okay. he did a speaking thing for the library at the Senior Center this week. And he will be releasing the book officially on Monday night at Jasper's in Holliston. Wow. And nice. so it yeah. really, there's a focus on Hopkinton on it, but it really goes through everything from like the, the Scream Tunnel in Wellesley, Heartbreak Hill, and he well, looks at two perspectives. And he, too, and he looks at two perspectives. One is being a past marathoner, and one is, you know, being a spectator okay. and being involved. He's written other marathon books. He's ah. written about the Falmouth Marathon and things like that, and he's following marathons. So he'll be on next week, and it's all you know in great timing well, going into we're, the marathon. We're oh, building really? up. We had Tim and, killed um, off on a couple of weeks ago, and and so remind me, what's the, the date of the marathon again this year? Eighteenth, April eighteenth. And some some people on the page have posted, "Wow, I didn't know if they're newcomers um, made our summer or spring vacation plans because it always dovetails with that." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's always on Patriots yeah. Day, guys. So, yeah. so if you just <laughs> moved here, it's not going to change the date for your vacation. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> yeah. You, what you need to understand is Patriot's Day is not a national holiday. When right. I moved no, it to isn't. town, it's not even I'm a like, New England. What? Yeah. And I'm like, I had no It's clue. only a Massachusetts thing. It, it's really something that is not, yeah. um, oh, right. you know, <laughs> uh, right. recognized. When I explained to my corporate that we were shut down that day, and they're like, right. what are you talking about? We that my consultants out. weren't working. And right. And I said, no, uh, almost no business is open. So mm -hmm. yeah. well, you've got to find well, your way out if you need the, to get um, out before 7 a.m. And until the marathon rolled back to this 9 o'clock start time, when yeah. it was at oh, noon, you. Oh, I know. we I used to it. go from Ashland up to Lexington to see the battle, the battle, yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Back, right. and then we would be back before they the shut down. race even started, oh, I wish it, and we'd watch yeah. outside St. Cecilia's Church yeah. you know, growing up. But the... Um, the our guest last week, um, Deb Thomas, right. um, is very involved in the event that's going to happen the week uh, leading into it on the 13th okay. with Bobby Gibb right. and that at the Country Club. And yeah. so um, that is actually going to be a neat thing to support. So and there's Bobby a lot Kidd, going on with Gibb, women and I art is, and writing. Tell everybody but else who she is. And we talked about it last week, but Bobby right. Gibb was the first woman to finish the Boston Marathon. Yes. Yeah. And she was a hijack runner that jumped in at the four Cynthia Bushes right at one ash tree. Yeah. All right. But, wow. um, so we've got a busy we couple weeks, seconds, and yeah. um, we have some fun guests coming up. Absolutely. Well, it's good to see you guys. Happy good to April catch Fool's up in Day. General. Yeah, don't see be See you cool. at the trailer at Snappy Dogs. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.